introduce and give a very warm welcome to Molly Balland, who is our next speaker. Molly is a business mentor, social media strategist, and founder of the Soft Business Movement. She's a mother of four girls, and she and her husband live on their family farm in Churchville, Maryland. She helps business owners uncover the meaningful work that they were meant to do and become leaders that make an impact in the world around them. Her writing and photography have appeared in print and online in places like Condé Nast Magazine, Pioneer Woman, Country Magazine, and creative ad campaigns for national brands you'd find at your local Target. She spent 15 years working as a social media strategist for the world's number one, uh, for the web's number one global media company for parents with an online audience of more than three million. But her heart felt called to a more meaningful work of her own that would make uh, an impact on her local and online community, so she launched her business in 2017. Now she teaches and mentors small business owners on how to build successful businesses with their own, on their own with a balanced and simple approach because she believes that you can have a thriving business online and a beautiful life offline. So with that, I'm going to pass the mic over to Molly. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks. All right, hi, thank you for having me. Hopefully that's good. Um, I am Molly, and that was, I just realized I wrote a really long bio, so sorry. <laughs> um, but like I said, I live on my family's farm in Churchville. Um, I have four girls, three of the four ride, so I'm also broke. Um, <laughs> and I have sheep. Uh, my girls do not, but we live on our family's farm out there. My grandfather is a cattleman, former cattleman. He's 95. He used to farm with horses, um, and now we can't keep him off the tractor. But uh, And he calls my sheep range maggots, so <laughs> it's, it's a fun place. Um, but I want to talk to you tonight about social media marketing, which, like you were saying, Meredith, it's like I teach this over years <laughs> to people, and so to kind of consume, you know, squish it down into 50 minutes is going to be interesting. And what I really want to do tonight is sort of give you an overview just really briefly of sort of the big three. And then we are going to zoom in on Instagram. And then I'm going to, um, mostly because I feel like Instagram, the uh, it's my favorite, but also because I think as I look at who's in the room and thinking about the different industries, it really is a really good platform to lean into. And a lot of the philosophy and things that you will work on for Instagram and marketing on Instagram could apply to Facebook, could apply to TikTok, could apply to wherever else you feel like you need to be showing up. Um, that said, I also want to reassure you that my belief out of the gate is that social media is just a tool in your tool belt. I, we are not full-time content creators. We do something else full-time, and this is just a piece of the puzzle, and that's really what I believe and really how I teach social social media um, because I don't expect you to be on all the time. So I really try to teach you just what you need to know, teach you how to show up strategically on social media, and make an impact with as little time as possible. I am like the most old-fashioned social media coach out there because I love it. It is a powerful tool. It is a powerful free tool. Um, it can change your business, but also I love to be offline, and I love my offline life, and that's really important to me too. So that is my philosophy going into all of this. Tonight, I just want to talk a little bit about, which I should have said, maybe, well, no customer. Now I'm like, should I have said consumer instead of customer? But no, customer. Um, where is your customer? We're going to talk a little bit about where you should spend your time. We're going to look at this, like I said, the big three social media platforms and just talk about which one, who's where, where you should spend your time, who you're talking to. Um, we're going to talk about your social media business card and why it's so important talk about building community, and then just a few important reminders to wrap up as we finish. Before I start, though, in case I need to go rogue and do something different, just kidding, I won't, but I would love to know how many of you um, have like a business Facebook page, just show of hands. All right, how many of you have a business Instagram account? Um, how many of you have a, a TikTok for your, for your business, not for yourself? Okay, awesome. How many of you have an email list? I'm not talking about that tonight, but it's another good health check. Okay. Um, if I could just open it up, and this is there is no right answer, I would just love, because it'll sort of help me as I sort of go through these slides tonight, what do you feel like for your business 
is the purpose, like why are you showing up on social media? No right answer. I don't have an answer I'm trying to get out of you. Like why do you do it? Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, she said to share your farm story. Yes, yeah, sorry, I've got to repeat back for the recording. Anybody else? Why do you show up on social media? To promote events. Okay, to promote events. Yep. To educate as many horses as possible to prevent them from going to slaughter. To educate as many horses as possible to prevent them from going to slaughter. Okay, cool. Awesome. There's a good story there. Yeah. Anything else? Do you do it to find customers, or do you find your customers other places? There's some of that too, hopefully. <laughs> if not, we're gonna talk. <laughs> See me after? No. Okay, let's go ahead and dig in. Um, first, we're gonna talk about where your customer is. I'm gonna talk Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. I'm gonna give you my opinions on them, and then we'll talk a little bit about Instagram specifically. Um, Facebook has 2.9 billion monthly active users. 60% of them are active daily, and it is the favorite platform of 35 to 44 year olds. My oldest is 21, and my youngest is 13, and between the age span of the four of them, they have zero interest in Facebook. <laughs> That's where like the old people hang out. Um, it is, so if you look at this last one, it says 7% of Gen Z plan to quit Facebook. I think they're either quitting it or they're just abandoning it altogether. Um, it generally, I think they really have no interest in it. And then I see a lot of people my age who um, I run like a social media membership group, like a learning group, and it used to be on Facebook, but there was so much, um, people were like, I just hate getting on Facebook, so can we move it somewhere else? Because they just didn't even want to be on the platform, especially during political seasons, people seem to sort of not like it. Although, everyone says that, the stats tell us that people still are checking in, they're still showing up on the platform. Instagram has two billion monthly active users. It is the favorite platform of Gen Z. It also is really popular with women age 25 to 34. So again, I'm telling you these things because it will sort of help you find your audience and figure out where they are. Um, people spend about 30 minutes per day on Instagram, which is a big chunk of time. That's a lot of time. Um, but wait till you see TikTok. <laughs> Um, so they're there, they're on the platform. And I thought this was really interesting as I was sort of picking out which stats I wanted to share. Um, users share, reshare reels a billion times per day in the DMs. So we're seeing things that we love, that we think are funny, that we think our friend will like, that are inspiring, that are the house we wanna have when we grow up, and we're sending it to people, our friends, our husbands, our spouses, whatever. Um, TikTok. TikTok is the second most downloaded globally app globally, just downloaded, don't get too excited about it. It has 150 million active monthly users. Users spend an hour and a half per day on TikTok, which kind of makes me sick to my stomach. I mean, how much over the course of a week, how much time are we wasting on TikTok? Um, but the audience, again, is young. So 18 to 24 year olds, 25 to 34 year olds um, are there on the platform. The next thing I want to look at is just kind of compare them. This is sort of my personal opinions about this based on data, but um, to me, every business needs to have a Facebook page because it has become like a website for a lot of people. If you really think about your personal habits, that's one of the best things to do when you're thinking about where do I need to spend my time, you know, what's important. If I think about Facebook and I am going to a farm to pick pumpkins with my kids, I'm gonna go to their Facebook page to find out where do I park, what are the hours, is there anything special, Am I sure it's open today? So you know, so Facebook has really sort of become like a web page for a lot of businesses. People come there for information, so it's important to keep it up to date. It's important to make sure um, that all you know your hours. Are people allowed to come to your property? Are people not supposed to come? Are there only certain days? All those kinds of things are really important to me. Um, it has. A lot of times I think cross-posting can be really, really effective. I used to never say this. I used to say Facebook has its own set of rules. Create your own content for Facebook. Create different content for Instagram. But as I've gotten older and wiser, I feel like it's, 
it's not practical for most small business owners to do it that way unless <coughs> it is your job. Um, so taking something you've posted on Instagram, pushing it through with just a click of a button to, Insta to Facebook can be just as good and, and just as powerful. The thing that I will say about Facebook that I have noticed is that a lot of times the people who actually get out their credit card and spend the money are spending time on Facebook, mostly because they're older and so they're the ones that are spending the money and consuming, but that is something to think about too. So it's definitely, don't blow it off, but I still think um, Instagram can be a really powerful platform where you can push things out and repurpose things lots of different places. I, only because I'm just focused on social media. Yeah, I would say you should have a website if at the very least a landing page. Um, to to me, yeah. Yes, so yeah, but a lot of times your social media platforms will show up in search if somebody's searching for a name or a farm name or that sort of a thing. Um, I would say priorities to me are your email list first above anything else is getting people's email addresses because that's the safest, strongest way to communicate with them. Then social media and website can come after that. Yeah, social media website, that's pretty interchangeable. They're both really important. Um, Instagram, Instagram is very visual. It's a visual platform. It's driven by photos, it's driven by videos, it's driven by story. Um, and so really a lot of people will come there to stalk your business. If they're gonna visit you or they're interested in hiring you, they wanna know what you're about, what's your philosophy, where, what's it gonna look like when I get there? You know, can I expect my kids to have fun? Or what does your product look like? Is it cool, is it for me? All those kinds of things. Really it's a place where people will come to sort of scroll your feed or they'll discover you there and then scroll your feed. Um, users expect to hear from businesses. Like we are on Instagram for sure to interact with our friends and share pictures of our children, but also we're there and we expect to hear from businesses. So when you pop up in someone's feed and they're following you, they're not like, oh my gosh, what are they doing on Instagram? They expect that. We want to we wanna hear from businesses. People want to feel connected to us on Instagram too. It is a great place to sort of become a face behind your business and behind your brand and connect to people. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later. And then TikTok. I am on TikTok as a user, not as a pr producer. I, I'm a consumer of TikTok. Um, I think that the thing about TikTok, if there was a TikTok expert here, they would probably say I'm wrong, but to me, growth on TikTok is a gamble. You could hit it off and get 10 million views and suddenly your business has blown up. However, the promise of that is very difficult. It's a little bit to me like playing the lottery. So it is all video driven. And so that can be a difficult platform for people. It doesn't come as easily. There's things to think about with editing and adding text and hashtags and copy. And while that is the case also for Instagram, I think there's a little bit more of, because it's been around a little bit longer, there's a little more strategy that you can put into it to help it work for you. And so TikTok could be super powerful. It has put businesses and musicians and people on the map. But I think it's one of those things where you have to be all in on TikTok and really be committed to it or have someone within your business who is like, I'm gonna take over our TikTok, just let me do whatever I want. Um, again, it lacks the diversity of content. It requires a really strong point of view. I think you need to decide, like, like you were talking about what your brand vibe is. Like, are you gonna get on TikTok and be sarcastic? Are you gonna be funny? Are you gonna be like really heartfelt and pull up people's heartstrings? Like, you need to sort of really develop a point of view. Um, and I think too that the app, as we can see by the amount of time people spend on it, it really is, this is true of all social media, but I think in particular, TikTok, people are coming there and their brains are just ready for a break. We're scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And I think that conversion of scroller to customer consumer is a little bit more difficult. We're not quite as engaged when we're on TikTok as we might be on Facebook or on Instagram. Um, so 
with that in mind, I'm going to sort of shift and kind of keep my focus on Instagram. I think there is value in all platforms. Every business is a little bit different. And so where your customer is, what's worth your time and your effort is going to be a little bit different. But to me, I think Instagram has the flexibility because there's so many different types of content you can create. There's so many different ways you can show up there that you can repurpose that content lots of different places. It could become a blog post. It could become a Facebook post. It could be a video on TikTok. Um, so one of the most important things that I kind of want to talk about, and this goes for all of your social media platforms, is I really want to talk about your social media profile. And I rarely will talk anywhere without talking about this because it's so important that um, if you're going to be doing any work on social media, if you're going to be engaging anywhere, if you're going to be creating any piece of content, if somebody is drawn to it, and if you think about your own habits, you probably do the same thing. If someone is drawn to it, the first thing they're going to do is they are going to go and check out your profile. Your profile on social media platforms is like your business card. So if it is not optimized for people to find you, if it is not optimized in the sense that um, it speaks to the person you're trying to attract, you're wasting a lot of time on social media because when people are like, oh, this person liked my post, who is this? And they go to your profile and it's got a boring picture and there's no bio and it's missing important information, then they're just going to peace out and they're not going to spend any time there, they're not going to follow you, and they're not going to connect with you. So I just want to fly through this really quickly um, because I also want to leave a little time for questions at the end if possible. Um, your Instagram profile, there's a few different parts of it. This is a really important, this first part, because what we want to do is we want to be able to show up in search results for people when they are looking for us on Instagram. And so there's two parts. Instagram has made this really confusing. There's two, you have two names on Instagram. You have a username and you have a name. And the username is basically like your actual, it would probably be the name of your business. It may be, most of you wouldn't be like a personal brand like I am, um, but it is like at whatever. Um, if somebody came on and searched for the name of your farm, that you your Instagram account would pop up. The name line, which is that bold text underneath, that name line is a place to really think about if somebody was searching for my business, what would they come to Instagram and search for? And you can use some of those keywords in that part of your bio. So if you were looking for an Instagram expert or if you were looking for, um, you know, Ricerstown Pumpkin Farm or you were looking for whatever, wherever you are, horse training or something like that, that is the kind of thing that you want to put in that line of your Instagram bio because it is searchable. So you can put a few things there, a few keywords there that makes sense. Again, you don't want to like stuff it full of keywords, but that makes sense that if somebody was searching for you, they would find you. Um, the next thing is your profile photo. A lot of people will use their logo or their brand. Um, I work with a lot, I, you mentioned cut flowers, I work with a lot of cut flower farmers ironically and they put a flower as their profile picture and I just want to go to sleep. It needs to be your face or it needs to be your logo, but your logo has got to fit in the circle. A lot of us create our logos without social media in mind, so we create a horizontal logo, and when you put that in a circle, you're getting this little tiny logo or a little tiny text that can't be read in a circle. So if you ever rebrand, keep that in mind. Make sure whoever rebrands for you makes social media marks for you as well. But you want to make sure it's simple, it's easy to read, because when people are on their phones, seeing you in their notifications, coming to your profile, it is very small. So you want it to be clear, simple, easy to see, easy for people to even read if you're going to go with your logo. Um, your bio, this is important in the sense that you need to let people know, like, I think the biggest question, the easiest way to simplify this is, like, what's in it for me? Like, your customer is coming to your profile, seeing it, and saying, what's in it for me? What am I going to get by following you? What's, what am I going to find on your page? What are you talking about? Why are you different from everybody else? Do that in 150 characters. No. <laughs> It's hard. It's hard to write a bio. I recommend writing it on your notes app in your phone and then copying and pasting it in. Um, 
but that is really important. If you are a business and you have a location where people can come to, that kind of information you can add in your bio, or you can also add it sometimes, um, depending on what type of Instagram account you have, you can have like a clickable link that someone can click on and open it up in Google Maps or Apple Maps or whatever. Um, so you can also add information there. Your link, you can link somewhere. Link to your website, give people a link to sign up for your email list. If you have tickets to an event, put your event ticket. You can change it as often as you like. Just make sure it's up to date. Um, and then the highlights, oh, that's, they're not showing there, sorry. Um, highlights are the little circles at the top of your profile. Those are just basically stories that have been saved. I'm not gonna get into that, but those are kind of like an extension of your bio um, that you can save and keep there. Okay, I just wanna talk a little bit about the different parts of Instagram, mostly because I want you to be thinking about where your time is best spent and what types of content would go in each place. Again, anything that would go in your feed could easily be shared over to Facebook. So when I talk about your feed posts, I'm talking about the little squares. They can be photos, they can be carousels, they can be videos, um, longer videos. So reels generally go up to like 90 seconds, so they can be longer videos. Anything you post in your feed, you can pretty much um, count on, well, you can't count on this ever. Thanks, Instagram. You can, I was gonna say you can count on it going to your audience. <laughs> That's not true. You can count on going to 0.2% of your audience, but um, it, is, it is not, compared to Reels, Reels really get pushed out to people who don't follow you. Things that are in your feed, if they show up for people, they're gonna show up for people who already follow you. That's important because if you are advertising a service or you are trying to sell something or you know you want the, the people who already follow you are basically like an already a warmed up customer like they have already made a commitment to you they've already showed interest in you so now when you're ready to sell something sometimes the feed is a good place for that um, the only time they're gonna really get in front of a new audience is if they're performing really well and they show up on people's explore page or if somebody shares it with their friends or if they're searching on hashtags um, reels. Reels are short videos, generally with music or voiceover or original audio. Um, they tend to be about 90 seconds. They can be much shorter. Most of my reels, if you look at them, are less than 10 seconds long, um, which is sort of a philosophy that I have about attention spans and what works well on Instagram. But um, they are favored by Instagram's algorithm. They really um, push these out, and they push these out to people who don't follow you. There's a whole tab on Instagram. It looks like it looks like this. That's dedicated to reels. So you, it's almost like a TikTok feed. You can just get in there and scroll and watch reels all day long. Um, and they're going to be reels from people that you don't follow. So it's a great discovery tool. It's a great way to reach a new audience. Um, and the, the way the algorithm works is that um, I think it, we always think of it as very intimidating and it's, and it's like working against us and we have to fight the algorithm and it's always changing. That is not reality. The reality is that the Instagram algorithm stays pretty consistent and your behaviors on Instagram um, affect the algorithm. And so what you are shown is based on your behaviors, based on the behaviors of people you follow. You know, I, if I go to my Explore page, which is like that little uh, magnifying lens on Instagram, um, like I'm really into watercolor painting right now, and it's like all watercolor. So I have influenced my own um, my own algorithm. If I go at Christmas time, it's like Scandinavian homes and Christmas, you know, like it's European Christmas, because that's what I like and that's what I start looking at. So you really, in the sense of um, your own habits influencing the algorithm, you really can do that for people as well. So you have a lot of control over it by the, with the content you create. Um, but the good thing about Reels is that it really reaches new people. It's a great way to reach new people. Stories are these little bubbles that live up at the top. They last for 24 hours and then they disappear. Um, sometimes that's good because we're feeling cringy about the things we create and we're like, oh, I can't wait for this to be gone. Um, they're 
little short clips. They're like 15, it depends on your Instagram account, 15 to one minute um, clips on Instagram stories. They're shown primarily to your followers. If somebody sees it that's not a follower, it's probably because somebody was like, oh my gosh, you need to see this, and they sent this, their, your story to them in a DM, a message. Um, they're great. Great, great, great for connecting with your audience, for sort of the behind the curtain, for um, giving them sort of the behind the scenes, the story of your brand and your business. I love stories. I think it's easy to show up there. I think um, it's a great way just to go talk to your audience, to show them what you're working on, day in the life, whatever it might be. It's just a really quick and easy way to show up. It does not have to be curated. We don't come to stories and expect it to be beautiful and a you know, perfectly lit photo kind of a thing. We just, we just expect to sort of be entertained and, and to connect with the brands that we follow. I do want to talk just for a second about video because we all know that we're living in a very video forward world. Um, and video really is powerful. Uh, social video generates 1,200% more shares than text and image content combined. It, and by shares, meaning like people are passing it on to their friends. So they're saying, I saw this, you're gonna love it. I'm sending it to you. Um, marketers who use video grew revenue 49% faster than non-video users. It's huge. Uh, <laughs> Viewers retain 95% of a message when they watch it in video versus 10% when reading it in text. And 60%, sorry, 68% of viewers make a purchase after watching branded social videos. So video is really a powerful tool. I think um, it's one of those things where when, you know, as things have been sort of moving more towards video, um, we sort of push back and we think it's gonna be hard and it's gonna require editing and special software and I have to get a fancy camera and how am I gonna get stuff from my camera to my phone? Literally your phone is the only tool you need for video. Don't overthink it. I will say, uh, as I say that, I also love still images. Like I, my photography will always have my heart. There is a place for that. If you are hearing this and thinking, ugh, I don't wanna be all video all the time. That's again why I love Instagram because it has that flexibility where both all kinds of content is welcome. Okay, all that to be said, I wanna get a little bit into like my philosophy of Instagram and, and I hope that in sharing some of this with you, it will help you figure out how you wanna show up on Instagram. It will provide like relief in the sense that like I just told you about all these places you could show up and what kind of content are you gonna create and strategy. But to me, it really all boils down to a few principles that when you kind of get those on lock, whatever you are creating falls under that umbrella and it all fits together in the puzzle piece. And I think this to me, it's kind of like the hill I will die on because I think that the biggest mistake I see businesses and brands making is that they come to me and they wanna know the quick fix. They wanna know how long should my reel be? Should it be seven seconds or should it be nine seconds? And I'm like, it doesn't matter how long your reel is if the content of your reel has no value, if you have no point of view, and if you're not there to build community. So I just wanna talk about this a little bit. Um, to me, we should all be focused on building community over building an audience. We are not here just to build followers. You could have 300 people who are committed and loyal to your brand. You could have 124,000 people who could care less because they just found you because you went viral and they're not gonna spend money with you. So do not get consumed by the idea that a large audience equals a successful business. I coached a girl last year. She had 124,000 followers and she got them by going viral several times and she could not sell a thing and she was trying to sell like $27 ebooks and workbooks she was in the DIY space she sold three so my first coach that I like put a lot of money in and hired had like a thousand followers and he was fabulous and he like changed the course of my business where I was at that time so followers in the sense that it provides some authority to your business because you know we still our brains still look at that number and think oh they must be popular they must know what they're talking about it does not necessarily equate sales and success 
Um, Simon Sinek says there's three things you need to have a community. Um, a community needs to be connected to one another, so that's already going to happen on whatever social media platform you're on. A community needs to be connected to an idea, and a community needs a leader. You are the leader of the community that you're building. Yes, you have a business, but you're actually building a little community on social media. And to me, when you focus on that, and the algorithm changes, or you're frustrated, or whatever, you're like, mm, I'm just here because I really like the relationships I'm building with people, or I like, you know, my audience really responds when I post this kind of content, and so I want to do more of that because it's fun and I'm getting feedback. So you really need um, to be community focused on social media versus audience building. The part I want to focus on though, and again this to me is the missing link for so many people, is that a community needs to be connected to an idea. And connecting your community to an idea means that you have to master your messaging. You have to master what it is, what is your point of view, what is it that you want to say on social media. We get there and we're like, I need to put a post up because I haven't posted in three weeks and we're staring at the, you know, the, the blinking cursor, we're scrolling our camera rolls and we can't think of anything to post. But when you get clear on your messaging, you get clear on your point of view and you have that sort of unlock in your mind, Content just comes more naturally. So how do you figure out what it is? Um, oh, oh, wait, that's my next slide. Here's why your message is so important. One, it helps you stand out. There are tons of people who do what you do. There are tons of people who sell broccoli. There are tons of people who sell hummus. Why is your hummus better? Because maybe your brand stands out because of your brand's messaging. It helps you attract your ideal customer. It establishes your authority. When you have a point of view and you stand for something, and you um, have like an opinion about what you do and why you believe in what you do, you create authority. And it simplifies content creation. Here's just a couple examples that I just grabbed. Um, this is the top one is Simple Green. It's building healthier communities by connecting people to real food. Um, Patagonia, it's like build the best product. This is very sort of similar to a mission statement, but it's a little bit, a little bit different. But they're all about you know, that you are going to have this thing for life. Um, Pure Elizabeth, I love this one, it said, we believe that food can heal. There's more to it, but again, a strong point of view. People who read that are like, yes, I want to be on this train. Um, this is a girl that I coach. She just started something called the Four Farmers Movement. Um, and she, her like whole thing, she wants farmers to feel seen. So she tells her stories in like podcasts and grants. And her line, it's really hard to read here, but it says, if we allow farmers to be invisible, they will disappear. That is like her mission, is keeping farmers from feeling invisible. Um, Okay, so where do you find what this is for you? I think there's three places to start. I think the first one is your niche opinion. So your niche is like your sort of field of expertise. What do people in your industry believe and how do you think differently? This is that like what sets you apart idea. How are you different? What is different about your practices? What is different about your philosophies and your beliefs and how you approach what you do and what you grow or what you build or make or serve? That's the first one. The second one is your personal opinions. When I talk about um, you know, that you have to stand for something. I'm not talking about like politics or things like that. Like I, it doesn't necessarily need to be that. But we all bring a set of values to our business no matter who we are and what we're doing. Um, so those things are reflected in our brand and in our work because certain things are important to us. So what values do you have personally that have impacted your business? And then the last one is methods. Your approach, how is it different? How is it unique from other people? Like, what is it about your approach that helps you stand out? If you had those three things on lock, if you had a sentence or two for each of these things, you've just written your Instagram bio. You've just written several pieces of content. You know, this, knowing these things is so important. And, and again, like I'm, I'm going a little more like philosophical on you versus strategy. But to me, strategy doesn't matter for anything if you don't have a strong message. Because that's the thing that's gonna make you grow. That's the thing that's gonna attract people to you. And that's the thing that's gonna really make you stand out. 
Okay, just to kind of wrap and slowly come down off my soapbox, um, just a couple things because again, this was like a hard one for me because there's so many things I want to tell you. Um, there's so much misinformation, and um, so I try to kind of like wrap up a few things, final thoughts for you as I finish this up. The first thing is this: facts tell, feelings sell. We talked about like Instagram being a place for storytelling, and if you get on and tell people, you know, this thing that I want to sell you weighs this many grams and it's this color and this is what you'll do with it, that's not attractive at all. People want to hear the story behind the thing that you're selling. Feelings are what sells. Story sells. The next thing kind of goes back to the messaging. You have to stand for something or you stand for nothing. Like you have to have a point of view. That is one of the most important things, one of the most common missing pieces of the puzzle when people come to me and they're like, oh, I can't grow, I've been stuck at this number, I don't know what to post. They have no clear point of view. It always, to me, comes down to that. Set realistic goals that are right for you. Don't look at what everyone else is doing and think, like, I have to do that too. Like, you really have to be clear about what you can handle, what you can take on. The best social media strategy, the answer to the question of, like, how often should I post on Instagram is whatever you can stick to consistently. I had the crazy outlandish opportunity today to get on the phone with someone from Meta who was a marketing expert. I don't know how it happened. I think I signed up for something long ago. And I got a text, and he's like, this is Yasser from Facebook, and I'm going to be calling you in 10 minutes from this number. And at first I thought it was spam, but it wasn't. It was real. Um, and he talked to me about my Instagram account, but also he said over and over again that cons how important consistency is for your reach, for the algorithm, and for your audience. I do something every Tuesday called Trending Tuesday where I give a trending audio for reels, and I give people a prompt that I think is meaningful and a good one to use that they can then create a piece of content with. And he said what has happened, <coughs> they do really well, like views in the millions, like it's crazy. Um, he said what has happened is that my audience knows it's on Tuesdays. The algorithm has picked up that on my Tuesday content does well, and it pushes it out to the people who have always saved it, to people who are similar to those people, so it's just this snowball effect. So consistency is important. He said if you come and show up one day and you have a great week and you're super motivated and you do five posts and then the next two weeks you're really busy and you don't post, that's like the worst thing you can do. So really think about what you can do. If it's one post, a week, that's great. If it's five, awesome. But really think about what that goal is for you and not what everyone else is doing. This is a question that's so important. I think sometimes as brands, we forget, um, we just want to tell people about what we're doing and what's going on, and we forget that what the real purpose is is that our audience is asking us, what's in it for me? Like, why do I care? basically. Like, we're, we're on social media for selfish reasons. We want to be entertained. We want to be inspired. We need a brain break. So we really need to be answering that what's in it for me question. So if you're telling the story of something or your, you know, your product or your farm or your service or whatever it might be, you still need to come back to that question of, like, why will they care? Maybe they'll care because it's a great story, but maybe you need to make sure that they know what their connection is to that thing. Um, have a plan and then simplify it. I think we get gung-ho sometimes about um, what we should do. I really like themes on social media. Like if you're struggling to know when to post, I tell people be like, okay, on Mondays you're always going to post an animal picture. And on Tuesdays you're going to feature somebody who works with you. And Thursdays it's going to be a quote. You know, whatever it might be. Like make it super simple. Like don't overcomplicate it. It does not have to be um, stressful. I spoke at something a few months ago um, and it was like a panel and the person on the panel was like I have to feed the beast of Instagram and I was like no you don't have to feed the beast like just make it simple create a, a little plan it doesn't take long and then when you have that plan in place then it gives you the freedom to know what you're going to post and when you have that messaging on lock it also gives you that freedom too. keep social media social um, spend time there hang out Follow people that you enjoy and unfollow people that you don't. Like, I 
my explore page on Instagram is all about my interests. <laughs> like, it's my business, but also I don't want to get on there and, you know, hate all the people I follow, hate myself and think I'm not doing a good enough job or whatever. Like, use it for yourself. Be selfish in the sense of, like, make sure the people you're following serve you and have purpose for you. But also, you need to be social with your people. Like, you need to reply to their comments. You need to shoot them a DM. You need to go on to other local businesses maybe every once in a while and, you know, leave a comment or encouragement or something like that. We need to be social. We'll get out what we put in. And lastly, above all, <laughs> please... Please clean off your camera lens. Just, Edwin, you're probably like hating that I'm saying this this way, but literally this is like one of my biggest pet peeves, so I always end with this one because uh, it's important. We're dirty. Like I have a client who's a baker, and every time he sends me a video, I'm like, Ugh, there's like flour all over. I can tell. Um, clean off your camera lens. It makes a big difference. Sometimes I'm like, why is my video so blurry? And then I clean my camera off, shoot it again. I'm like, wow. Quality just went up dramatically. Um, so that's it. I hope that was sort of helpful. I hope that gives you some things to think about when it comes um, to social media and how you want to show up. Strategy is super important. There's lots of people you can follow to get strategy. I do strategy, but also I think that messaging and that point of view is probably the most important place to start. Do we have time for questions or no? OK, if there are questions, maybe not. <laughs> I can make them available. I can send a PDF to make the slides available. tell people for how often to post stories and stories versus reels. Um, I think stories should be like, if you can pop up in your stories every day, even if it's one or two stories, that's great. Um, and, and that includes sharing something from somebody else. Like it doesn't always have to be content you're creating. So I would say just a couple times a day is a great sort of, uh, I always take weekends off pretty much. Um, so when I say a day, I mean five days, four days, whatever. Um, and so I think like showing up in stories like that, it will get easier. It will feel weird and clunky at first. But I think that's just a good way to keep sort of uh, in front of mind with your audience. And then as far as like reels go, um, to me, that just goes back to like, what can you do realistically? Um, you, I don't think you need to post every day. In fact, there's very few businesses that I would say post every day because people almost get fatigue from your content <laughs> and then they unfollow you. Um, but I think, you know, if you're posting one reel a week because you're new to them, that's awesome. You know, is, did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would honestly I'm I'm like old old school in the sense that I I just write it out like I get out a journal pen and paper and just start to write about each of these things and then I what I, I do is I just highlight them or underline them on the piece of paper and be like, oh, that's something right there. That was a good, you know. I think if you could have, it really is almost like a mission statement um, for your business, but if you had those on lock first, you'd be way ahead of the game. If you're already in it and, and showing up, if you can come back to this and figure out what this is for you and then how you can create content for those things, I think that's really important. That's a good question. Yes. Yes. Yes, I think that on, 
uh, I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a, a baby about scheduling stuff on Instagram, only in the sense that I like to push it out myself because I like to know that everything looks the way I want it to look. Um, so I generally don't schedule anything for Instagram. I, uh, Facebook scheduling, absolutely. I think that's totally fine. Um, I think that Instagram scheduling is fine. I think it works. The it's a free tool. Meta generally likes us to use their tools. Um, on the call today with the guy from Meta, he said, you know, if you edit somewhere else with your videos, he's like, at least add one creative tool to it before you post it. Um, from One creative tool from Instagram before you post it. So yes, I think scheduling is fine. I think the only drawback about scheduling is that sometimes it can make us disappear and we forget to check in when we schedule, um, if we just have everything going out. So I think if you do it, just make sure you're still checking in on the platforms. Yeah. Going back to the real first story. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, that's a good question. So she asked reels. <laughs> She's like, thank you. She asked, um, reels versus stories, like what kind of content goes in either place. Um, to me, a lot of times people have gotten comfortable in stories and then reels came along and they like clammed up and didn't know what to put there. And a lot of times something that you've made for stories could go and become a reel. So there can be that like easy overlap. I think stories are more like, um, I think stories are more like, to me, a little more behind the scenes, a little more we're taking you along, you know, something cool is happening or you might want to see this, or if I show you that this process, you know, you're going to understand more about what we do. Um, so to me, that's kind of stories, content, and then reels is going to be more like in your like point of view, more inspirational, maybe more... Um, educational and that sort of a thing. That said, I think there's always a, a case to break the rule and like you could put something in your stories and if people like responded to it, just make it a reel because it's free content you've already created. So yes, it's a little more behind the scenes storytelling but then reels are just, they say educational, inspirational and um, Humor, what's the third one, I think? Education, inspiration, and humor are kind of the three things to focus on with reels. But a lot of times we create really good content and stories and it could just become a reel. Yeah. All right, thank you.